right, wonderful. Well, welcome to um, our spring series of the uh, Harvard's anti-racism film series. And I am I'm grateful to be joined tonight with our co-host, uh, David Harris from the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute and Coco Rosenberg from the Harvard Graduate School of, of, of Education. Um, and um, we'll drop in the chat uh, the series um, and you're welcome to attend uh, the following Wednesday every other Wednesday night from seven to eight. So throughout the fall semester, and we'll take us right into the spring. Um, and we're really fortunate for you, uh, for you to be here with us tonight and to be joined by both the filmmaker and, um, and a illustrious panelist. Um, and um, the, our film, as you I'm sure have seen, if you've, as you registered, it is called The Uncomfortable Truth. It's a 2017 film documentary by Loki Mulholland and um, a director here with us tonight. Um, and um, let me just read a little bit about oh, um, Loki's bio. He's the son of a famous civil rights activist, Joan Trump, Trump Hour Mulholland, and he grapples with his family's deep roots in racism as he unearthed his family's history and the truth behind their slave owning past. Um, so the Loki explores the United States' institution of racism um, that constitutes, uh, that continues to haunt our country today through this very personal journal. So The Uncomfortable Truth is an unapologetic film that lays bare what we all need to understand about each other with an open and honest dialogue on race and society. So that is what awaits us tonight. Um, and then our, for our panel afterwards, we'll be joined by Loki and his perspective, understanding the film, how that question came to be um, and, and highlighted by Tamara Lanier. And T Tamara um, is also a civil rights activist in her own um, way. And she's an ancestor and leader of um, in the coalition to free rent. And people familiar with the case of Lanier versus Harvard is regarding the ownership of, of the um, Zeely daguerreotypes that are held at the Harvard Peabody Museum. And so um, Tamara is representing her ancestor, Papa Rente, and will be joining us to think through what it means to um, find and um, acknowledge the roots of slavery in our families and in our homes. So um, with that, I, I think the film is um, 87 minutes. So we're going to play the film through. Um, and then afterwards, please join us for a discussion with, um, with Loki, Tamara, and David Harris. Um, other, other housekeeping issues. Um, we will be recording um, uh, the, the question and answer period and the discussion panel session at the end. And um, we hope you enjoy. Okay. Let, us sit, let us sit for a moment here. Um, I think you know there's some 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 chat in the comment. I encourage people to to use the uh, the chat. Um, and uh, you know, uh, thank you, Loki. It uh, certainly is. Uh, <clears throat> it's a it's a full uh, it's a full vision. Um, I, uh, you know, it's, it is interesting. I mean, I, I think, you know, I'm really, I, I hope we're really, we're really lucky, I think, to have Tammy with us. Uh, I, I think, you know, it's an interesting, um, and, you know, I don't mind, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to start by asking Tammy a question. Um, um, because on some level, Tammy, I mean, this is a, this is a film about the journey of discovery and, 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 and family and history and retrieving and understanding. So I'm kind of wondering from you, you know, if there's the resonance there with, with your experience, um, you know, yeah. and uh, if that's okay with you, Loki, I'd like to ask her to, to, to kind of take us through a little bit of that as well. 100%, I'm looking forward to hear from her. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for that piece. Very heavy, very, very much to digest. But um, 
there was so much where I can say our paths somewhat intersected in that we were on similar journeys. Um, you know, even starting with uh, the oral history where you uh, are talking about, you know, your mother, your grandmother. Um, and uh, not only that, but like the keeper of the story in my, in, in, in my journey, I, I have an oral history uh, that was first introduced to me through my mother at a very young age. Um, and, and, and she is talking about her African born enslaved ancestors. And that story, which was shared with her, to her um, by her grandfather who was born a slave. So I personally, and not that many generations removed from slavery. Um, and I think that is in some part why it's so real for me because the people who were so very close to me who I loved and adored are people who actually endured um, who actually lived through or lived with people who were enslaved. And there was a comment that, um, and I, I apologize, I didn't catch his name, the, your co-moderator, he talked about, he said something that my mom actually shared with us is that there was no shame in slavery. And those enslaved people who lived amongst them were respected and revered um, because they endured and because they uh, uh, lived through slavery. So um, the, the other thing that was um, um, uh, uniquely similar uh, when we talk about um, the, the, the pictures in the family, you had an image of family photos. And I have had um, a wonderful opportunity to not only meet and spend time with the slaveholders, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but also Louis Agassiz's, the, 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 the father of scientific racism and white, superior, white uh, supremacy. I've spent time with his family as well. Um, but when we look at, when we compare our genealogy, Dr. Edmund Taylor um, provided me with a document that starts with probably back in the late uh, early 1700s of his ancestors all lying together. And so when I put my genealogy and my pictures up just opposed to those, the one thing that stands out for me is I have no images. Uh, you know, Louis Agassiz's children can have uh, documented photos from Louis Agassiz to where they are today. And so, you know, and so it made me come to terms with the fact, what are my ancestors doing while um, those that enslaved them are taking pictures? Uh, my, my ancestors were share, my mom's family were sharecroppers. And, and, and the generation before that, they were slaves. They weren't posing for photos. So I didn't have the photos that they had. And I felt that void um, when I compared my family tree to theirs. And um, it, in one of the previous discussions that I had, I talked about the impossibility of tracing back and building a family tree when you're a person of color and all of the obstacles and what genealogists refer to as brick walls that you encounter when you get back to, or when you go beyond the early 1900s, there are no records and the possibility of putting this piecework together. And I had a gentleman say to me, well, I can trace my family back to the 1700s. And I'm like, no, duh, you know, obviously you can. Your family was not impacted by slavery as mine was. Um, but, you know, I, I just, in looking at your family tree, I had that, that feeling again of that void. And, and the differences in our experiences as I felt when I compared my tree to the Agassiz tree or to the Taylor tree. And, um, you know, the, the, the other thing, um, when you, you're visiting uh, cemeteries, um, um, uh, gravesides and cemeteries, um, I actually was, um, that was a big part of my finding my family. Um, the, the, the one thing that I had the benefit of having was the probate will. That was another experience we share where we're going through. And the lines in Benjamin Franklin Taylor's probate will 
he, my family was gifted. I think you alluded to that too. And, and that always stuck with me in a sense that black life was so devalued that we were given away as gifts for Christmas, as gifts for holidays is, you know, and, and, and I think about that, that, that type of marginalization um, and, and that experience where you are, are, are reduced to simply a gift or a, or a favor for another person. But in, when I read the will, it, Dr. Um, um, Benjamin Franklin Taylor, he says to my son, I give and bequeath the following slaves in their increase. Uh, and, and he's, you know, he names my family. Um, when I get to the slave index and I'm going through, I'm sorting between cows, pigs, and other chattel. You know, you're going down and you're in a family and then all of a sudden you're with animals. And so, you know, and so again, you get that, that, that feeling of disinheritance, of devaluing and, and, and just inhumanity. And so um, at the grave sites, I did actually go back and visit. Now, uh, my ancestors, the ones that I could find, were buried in um, Afro-American cemeteries. And um, I actually plugged, I was listening, I pulled out a picture because this resonated, it stayed with me. I don't know if you can see it well, but this is a yucca plant. Mm -hmm. and, um, what I learned is because like there's no headstones, there's no markers. We just know that this is space where people were buried. And so the person who was with us said that, you know, they didn't have markers, but where you see all of these beautiful plants is where they put uh, of these plants to use as markers to identify grave sites. Mm -hmm. So I was standing there in this area with all of these beautiful plants and no markers. And then I had the realization that these enslaved people, they, 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 they toiled until they died. And then they were thrown away as if, again, the devaluing of black life. And um, it's an emotional experience because here I knew my ancestors were buried and that no one felt the need to, uh, to, to mark that space as a place where this person lived um, or died. Um, and again, I just felt the, the, a, a sense of loss and a sense of um, disinheritance. Um, but, you know, the, again, so much. Um, one of the other things, um, the, 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 the tailors in meeting with them, firstly, the small miracle of finding them. And I, you know, I was blessed to have people uh, who helped me to track down my ancestors. I knew from the probate will that I had to find Dr. Taylor's descendants in order to find my enslaved descendants that they were gifted to him. So they migrated along with them. And that was a process. Um, but ultimately um, I found Dr. Taylor and I called him. And it was a very, very strange experience because um, I was helped by a, a young woman who lives in Columbia, South Carolina. Her name is Rose Shiver, but Rose found this number and we were talking on Sunday evening and she said, um, I believe this is Edmund Taylor's number. You can call him. So without thinking, I started dialing. But as the phone started ringing, then I'm thinking, okay, what the heck am I doing? What the heck am I going to say? What if this person is a hater or someone who is not... Um, uh, you know, or, or racist or something. Um, so I then became nervous about calling him. But when his daughter answered the phone and we talked, we had an amazing conversation. And I was actually uh, invited to come and, and visit with Dr. Taylor, who was an amazing person. And um, he made sure that he took me along, you know, showed me um, the one thing that I had shared earlier and I think is worth mentioning Dr. Taylor felt it was important that he make sure I knew that his Taylor ancestors were not the, 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 the typical slave holders who beat and treated their enslaved people um, harshly. He said um, that the Taylors treated uh, their slaves with dignity and respect. And I remember, you know, kind of pointing to the paradox of dignity and respect. 
but I also know that there were some things in my research that pointed to the fact that renting had a, a somewhat um, um, unusual relationship with the Taylor family. Um, but I am also follow, followed by a documenter. And when we were trying to engage, uh, Dr. Taylor was 98 years old when I visited him. He, he, late, he, he saw him there after passed away but the family did not really want to have the public discussion about their ancestors owning slaves. And I, I remember I felt like I could not push that discussion. I had to respect their wishes, but I also remember thinking that they have to come to terms with it. And by not talking about it, it was only gonna compound the discomfort they had in dealing with those issues. And so, um, you know, but, you know, and we still stay in touch. We have, you know, a, an interesting, uh, uh, amicable relationship, but they're, they're not inclined to talk publicly about the fact that they descend from slaveholders. And uh, on the other hand, I had the great pleasure of a meeting and I have spent a great amount of time with Louis Agassiz's children. Again, the same weird set of circumstances. Um, after one of the stories about the case, one of his great, great, great granddaughters reached out to me and um, she did through social media at a time where every time that there's a story, particularly in a larger newspaper, there's a lot, I, I, I'm sorry to say haters, but I should just be honest and say that they're racist. Um, they chime in with a lot of ugly comments and um, a lot of racially insensitive things and uh, they inundate my, my social media pages. But I got this message. I wasn't sure if it was from Agassiz's granddaughter, but uh, it turned out to be. Um, I called her. Again, I was nervous about what the conversation would be, but just amazing, very socially woke, um, social justice, um, advocates, uh, the entire family, not at all what you would think um, of people who had descended from a man who had such a twisted point of view. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the only thing that I can say uh, about what I witnessed in your film is the, 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 the raw emotion at the end and, and going through the um, not only slave indexes, but census information and looking for people and seeing, you know, like what I would see, my, my, my mother was, um, her parents were sharecroppers. We saw the white sharecroppers and we saw our entire families in each census you see, and as the families get bigger, but there are people that just seemingly disappear like Rinty's daughter, Delia. There's nowhere to be found. You see them and then they're not. And so, again, there's that void and there's that sense of loss and that sense of um, just despair. And, uh, and, and, and I am fortunate to be able to, because of the oral history that I have, to be able to trace much of my, the generations, but for those who don't have the oral history, it's, it's kind of like, um, being a foster child or being an adopted child where you're looking and you're looking and never really connecting. And that's a, a, that's a feeling of loss that's hard to describe. But yeah, so much of what you shared, I have also lived. So, uh, and I, I know that feeling of despair and disappointment and just frustration at the circumstance the circumstances um, of the generations that have come before me, so, yeah. Yeah, Loki, I don't, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. I mean, and it's, it, it is fascinating to see these two stories. I mean, and think about these journeys. I mean, and some of the resonances, it's interesting, Loki, you start with that social media <laughs> uh kind of experience you know and, and and tammy comes back and talking about that and uh you know i think uh you know the, the role of as we know in in, in tammy's case the, the photograph is central <laughs> to, you know is central and i mean it's you know the the these histories so i'm curious you know what you think loki about the kind of 
these two, these journeys that we're on and how we how we think about uh, you know in a way as a country how do we how do we start to to have conversations about these journeys you know and uh, across you know you know I know you've thought about it so I'm kind of curious what do you think yeah you know as as a country I mean it's 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 nice to see that these conversations are taking place like like in this forum right now um, you know I, I know the 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 courts ruled I think it was you know today or yesterday on on uh, re regarding the copyrights and so forth and who, I mean, uh, it's good we're having conversations, but mm -hmm. actions speak louder than words. Um, and so that's, that's I, I borrowed a quote from my mom in the film where, I, where you know, she said, that, you know, I, I can't do everything, but I can do something because doing nothing's not, not an option. And that's why I'm doing the film, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't want to pick on Harvard, but Harvard could easily just do something. And yeah, you can pick on Harvard. That's all right. And and, and uh, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, when I read their response, I was just like, okay, okay this is, you know, if, if someone took pictures of my family members, like the way those photos were taken, particularly a nude photo, mm -hmm. I mean, my gosh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, and I don't think people understand how all that, you know, seems to work. I, uh, and this is no comparison, you know, mind you, but there's a photo of my mother and Dr. King that I don't have rights to because it's Dr. King. Now I have a photo of Dr. my mother and Dr. King, a different photo that, you know, I have rights to because we took it, right? Um, but I've never reached out to the King family about, you know, using it. I mean, it's, it's on the internet, right? But um, yeah, I, I just, I just, I just, I just think it's, you know, you, you do what's right because it's the right thing to do and you mm. don't make excuses for it. Um, and there's this whole issue of, I, I honestly started thinking about this when I read the article, I started doing a little bit of research, just thinking about, okay, there must be a concern in regards of ownership and that if we gave up this ownership, then what does that mean about anyone else, particularly when it comes to things like inventors? So there was a lot of enslaved people who invented things that white people got credit for and made a lot of money on. So does the family, what, this comes back to reparations and all these questions. I mean, there's a lot, all these universities and stuff are tied into white supremacy from the get go. I mean, we just know that and we're trying to unravel that history and, and work through that. But um, it's where, uh, you know, I, I said in the film where the myth followed her to the grave right and that myth discontinued and so even though you know the this this trade you know this this the confederate states of america you know uh lost a war right um we still the, the myth continued mm -hmm. right that mythology continued. even though the, the south you know the, the confederate states of america was buried that myth continued and the, the, trying to confront that and work with that. Well, you know, if you just keep carrying around all of that, you know, and, and you, know, so, you know, we don't talk about it, nothing's gonna change. But there are, there's important gestures that have to take place, like the removal of statues, you know, like free and renting, right? I, for me, the hardest, it was, um, I, I've had people ask, why, why'd you get so emotional? I'm like, well, because she's a human being. You know, uh, you know, God created people, not borders, right? Uh, we're we're all part of this human family, and it it it, it just unnerves me yeah. this lost history and everything else that goes along with that. And then, of course, that my family part, took part in this. Now, I have people who say to me all the time, "Well, I never owned any slaves." I'm like, "Well, I'm glad to hear that, right?" Neither did I. Um, but it's not about what you didn't do. It's about what you're doing today. And the Harvard of today might not have taken those pictures then, but it's the Harvard of today. Yeah. And we're all, you know, we all have a, a part to play in, in truly living up to the principles that we espouse, uh, that we tell our kids every day when they go to school, you know, when they can go to school, when they make that pledge of allegiance, which is a pledge for social and human rights, Liberty and justice for all. I mean, it's right there. 
uh, you know, and, and what's in the Constitution, you know, in the Declaration of Independence, these, these principles that we just don't measure up to. And we need to start just doing it. You know, there's a there's a <clears throat> there's a there's a phrase in the in 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 the uh, in the response to the motion for dismissal, uh, and I can't reconstruct it exactly, but it's a powerful phrase that that rather than you know, so there's on some level there's a question of law here on on the ownership of these photos, and the the, the court has made what 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 what. What some of us might think is a mistaken decision on on the law itself, but but let's say supposing they were right on the laws. In in, in the brief, there's this comment that the law itself has to be based on and reflect some idea of justice and 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 what's right and morality, yeah. right? That you can't separate them. And and as you say, you know, Loki, you know. There's there's a question of the law and there's a question of what's right, mm -hmm. and and yeah. you know Tammy, I mean I you know I you know I don't know how you how you kind of deal with that conflict, but but I also I also wonder because look you say you know like the, the, the question of action is on the board, and I'm wondering Tammy if you have idea if, if there are things that you think that people can do. I mean at this point you know. Um, uh, you know, and 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 con constructive things. What 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 could we be doing? Do you think uh, that that would be kind of that would actually, in a way, honor the journey that Loki's taken? You know, at the kind of hard look he's taken at his background and his life. Miss Tammy, yeah. before you jump in, I just want to say something to to this. The, the copyright is over. Okay, <laughs> it's public domain, right? The, the, it's it's the actual well, physical. Great. Until we brought this case, people were still signing copyright documents. Oh, sure. But the, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that that's really, it, it, it's the physical property. And here, Harvard still wants to own somebody. Still wants to say, we know what is best than you. Anyways, I, I just like, just... Just, just hand them over. Just be done with it. Hand them over. Make the gesture. Do something more than just merely just. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. Go ahead and answer the question, Tammy. I, 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 <laughs> one thing that I think this film accomplishes tonight is that it brings a humanistic perspective to not only my case, but what you have basically um, detailed is the miseducation of America and how we have been fed a line of false narratives in terms of who we are as a people, who we are as a country, how we came to be, that our laws are, uh, are, are, are inconsistently applied and inconsistently enforced. And historically from slavery um, throughout the evolution, uh, the, the, from slavery to chain gangs, to convict leasing, to sharecropping, peonage, Jim Crow, New Jim Crow, um, mass incarceration, uh, to where we are today. Slavery has evolved, it never ended. Um, and I think that that was the intent because you have the disclaimer line in the 13th Amendment, but for the punishment of a crime. And there was the, 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 the hidden message to people who were looking to perpetuate slavery. Um, it's over, but for the punishment of a crime. But what I think there is, is a miseducation because people don't know the history. There was a lot of history imparted here tonight, um, even with the GI Bill, because my dad was, uh, uh, he was a veteran um, who had to fight for access. People don't know these things. Um, mm -hmm. you know? And so the first thing is about educating people as to the true history of this country. And then beyond that, when we understand slavery and the whole issue of reparations, it's, it's like this, it's this terrible word that you can't speak in, in mixed company, but it's not foreign as a concept. We've embraced it, we've used it in the past, but God forbid that we talk about using it to repair the harm caused by slavery. And the politics, the hypocrisy of politics, uh, the, the hypocrisy of Harvard, 
I think, you know, again, um, and I, and I, I, I want to share with you, my attorneys do plan to appeal. We believe that we have uh, um, many, um, we have a strong legal argument, and we believe that there is much that can be reversed in this argument. But Harvard would have people to think that this is about property rights in the sense that this is a contract issue over a photographer and a photograph. This is anything but. This is the, the violence of slavery. This is uh, uh, the, the perpetuation, the plunders of slavery when the state of Massachusetts had abolished slavery and gave slaves property rights and the right to seek redress in court. So, um, you know, and certainly the judge kind of washed over the fact that Harvard doesn't have good title, uh, that what Harvard did was they committed a crime. But for this judgment to stand, the court is actually saying that we are going to reward the criminal Harvard because they did commit a criminal act with the proceeds of their crime and allow them to not only gain prestige from these images and profit from these images, never in history have we done this before. This is not jurisprudence. And I do believe as in my complaint says, and it is really a phenomenon I have to throw um, credit to my attorneys for just an amazing piece of work and not only um, you know, keeping this case in, 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 in the front line and not on the headlines, but also that the complaint and the motion to dismiss were great pieces of legal work. Um, but, you know, one of the lines, one of my favorite lines um, is uh, um, that uh, reparations flow from the tort fees are to the victim, not the other way around. And for this judgment to stand, the court would have to see fit to reward the person who committed the crime, which is Harvard, and the de facto person who committed the crime, with the, the, the proceeds of that crime. And uh, that just doesn't happen. And I still believe um, that an unjust ruling will not sit well with people. And I have had more responses since this ruling that I had initially when we filed, because people see the harm in what the court is saying. This ruling perpetuates slavery. This ruling rewards the bad actor. This ruling disregards the 13th and 14th Amendment. And uh, if we are going to be honest about what we have put in them, what we put on paper and what the Constitution says, and if we're going to apply it fairly, you have to return or, or, or relinquish the images to me. And um, I have every confidence that when the last word is said, it will be give Miss Lanier those images. And so it, it, it may take, you know, but I'm patient. And um, um, I just, you know, like I said, I believe that when the law is properly interpreted, I will be the one left with the daguerreotypes. But you're, you're, sharp, you're sharing this afternoon, I hope for those who have watched it, um, it helps them to put a personal perspective on those deeply affected by not only slavery, but also um, the slaves, but the slave holder side. People are deeply affected by this. Um, and and it, it is an emotional journey. And, um, and, and so people ask me, why do I fight? Because you know what, I feel like the, the, firstly, the dignity, the integrity and the humility of my family is in question here. Um, my mother who kept this story alive, uh, you know, even in her latter, latter days when she knew she was dying, this is what she talked about, write these things down. This is a purpose-driven story. Um, it, I believe it has a larger purpose, but I'm just, um, I, I'm just hoping that people will see the humanity in it, as opposed to it being about a photo and a photo shoot, because mm -hmm. anything but that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, again, I'm so, you know, you know, again, as always, these, these conversations are so rich and, and really, you know, need to go on and on. And I, and I wish we could, but I, <clears throat> Loki, I'd like to ask you one final question, uh, which is, what's your sense of, of, of how you want this, your film to be used? How do you, I mean, um, 
who do you see as your as as your as your audience and and what do you want people to to to, to take away from it and 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 apply how how should they apply the lessons of this film well you know the original title of the film was actually why you're a racist and didn't even know it um which tells somehow you that you comes through <laughs> <laughs> it kind of tells you who the audience is for um <laughs> But it's, it's, I mean, really it's, 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 it's primarily a tool for white people to actually learn some real history. I get people who say, well, you're rewriting history. I said, you're right. You're hundred percent correct. I am rewriting history back to what it should have been. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you, you, we, we've, if you understand anything about the daughters of the Confederacy and the, and the you know, lost cost narrative and all that sort of stuff. I mean, this, this is literally what's going on. This is, this is why when I talk with educators, little educators you know, in our school systems and I ask them, you know, why did we fight the civil war? The number one answer is state rights. You know, and yet you know, Alexander Stevens, Cornerstone speech, the Confederate States of America's constitution, all this stuff points to the facts of slavery. And yet somehow our educators want to say state rights, right? Um, this is, you know, we, we use this for, you know, for, for education purposes, you know, primarily to help, help uh, we have junior, you know, high schools and stuff that use it. We, um, you know, it's using college formats, of course. And, but really it's hopefully to educate educators in particular. 80% um, of, of our educators and particularly elementary school and secondary school is, are white women. But the majority of students are people of color and there's that total disconnect because they don't know any history. Um, this is not a knock on, uh, on our teachers as much as it is in our education system because they only regurgitate what they've been taught. And particularly yes. elementary schools, they, they only, they're not taught, they're, they're taught to teach, right? Um, and so the rest of it, they're just kind of spitting back out what they've heard and, and, and the like. And so I get a lot of people said, I have no, I had no idea and they feel they feel cheated. They feel lied to, and which I'm I'm like glad, you know I'm like good, you know. Now what are you going to do about it? Um, and, and 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 for uh, African American audiences, you know they uh, it's like when they have that that friend, you know. Um, I almost have to put that in quotes sometimes. You know those those, those white people who want to say something. Yeah, I'm glad you really brought that up. You know, I, I would love to have this conversation with you. Here, why don't you watch this film? You know, and yes, it's you know, it's, it's on Amazon. Um, you know, I've, I've got other films that kind of play into that. There's one we just did called "The End of Slavery: The Fight for Amendment C," and this comes back to the Thirteenth Amendment and that exclusion. Where so in the state of Utah, where I live right now, they just just took slavery out of the Constitution in last year. That language of slavery has finally gone. Um, it was actually spearheaded by the first black female elected official in the state of the, uh, the history of the state, um, Representative Sandra Hollins, who's also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And uh, when that question came up about the 13th Amendment, when I asked her about that, I said, but it's just, you know, I, I, when, I do my, when I do interviews, I ask a lot of white questions, I, the way I phrase them. Uh, but those are just words. Right. No, we're not going to go back to slavery. And her response was really straightforward and said, they weren't, those words weren't written for you. And as long as they are there, there's always the option. And, you know, so as a white person, I'd never had to think about that. And uh, when I heard her phrase it that way, you know, again, it, 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 we need to, racism really needs to be personal. We really need to understand its impact. Uh, in a film I did called Black, White and Us, at the end of the film, one of the people is, uh, it's, it's, it's about racism through the lens of transracial adoptions. So white families who believed racism didn't exist anymore and then adopt these black children. And one of the guys is a, is a co-author, born in Utah, and his, the co-author, you know, African you know, white guy, and co-author is a African-American gentleman in, um, in Baltimore, and it's a book called Courageous Conversations on Race. And he says, uh, you know, he's, he's like, you know, so Curtis gets, you know, he's this revelation. 
you know, all this is going on. He's like, finally started to connect the dots and really gets it. He says, what do I do, Glenn? What do I do? And his one answer is, believe me. Mm-hmm. Just believe me. Don't try to qualify it. Don't do anything else. So, you know, like in Tammy's case is, you know, uh, her, her, her response and her emotions and, and, and her reactions to everything are very real. And believe her, right? Make, make it personal. Because the what informs, but the why transforms. And we, we need to better understand the why of, of all of this stuff. And when we do, not just dates and things, but when we do and understand the why, why it's important that you know, these daguerreotypes get back into the family's hands and all these sort of things, and we start to listen and understand those things all across the spectrum, but just looking at this in particular, that becomes transformative for all of us. And that's when things really, truly change. So, you know, on that note, I, you know, again, as always, I, <clears throat> I put it in the chat. I encourage people to, to share this film with their family and friends. Um, Sarah has put in the chat another film that we have coming up, a discussion that we feel the same way about. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, Loki, I, I thank you so much. And Tammy, you know, I especially, I know, you know, when you're scheduled, it, it, means, it means a lot to everybody here to have, have heard you. And especially today when this decision was publicized uh, and to be able to have the two of you together you know, these, the, you know, there, there's, you know, the, these journeys are our journeys. You know, I said, I say before the Papa Renti, I, 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 I see him as my ancestor as well. And so these stories are all our stories. And, um, and I thank you both for being our guides. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Sarah, you want to sign us off? Yeah, I, I, oh, what, a, what a beautiful evening to, to hear from you both. And, and we, we're hearing in the chats people who are you know, working on their own family histories, researching their communities, looking for the records. And I think you know, one of the things, my big takeaway from you know, hearing Tammy talk about this, this yucca plant and things, ways of making history beyond the record, right? And so how, you know, through the oral history, through traditions of of, of beyond the institution itself, can we circumvent it and 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 make our, our healing practices of hi- history making? Um, so thank you both for for giving us these examples, and um, I'm sure people will be in in, in touch. And uh, thank you for for moving us forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to let us kind of ride out and watch some of the the thank you notes coming in and and uh, and say good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, David.